Sasuke39 is fast on the approach, so that means it's time to predict who will fall into some weird water and who won't. I'm Ninjas, and these are my Sasuke39 result predictions. Before we get into predicting the individual competitors, we obviously need to talk about the general tournament's results in my mind. Let's kick it off with Stage 1. Now, in Stage 1, there isn't too much change. The Silk Slider is now seemingly only one clock instead of two, and there are two warped walls uh, instead of one, with the tackle still there, which could pose quite an issue. But I still think this is going to be a very high map clears in the first stage. I'm going to say between 19 and 21 stage one clears, something similar to uh, Sasuke 34. Now when it comes to stage two, from looking at trailers, there doesn't seem to be much uh, in terms of change. It seems to be exactly the same as the previous tournament, unless there's a change to the time limit. Uh, so I'd go with even a higher clear rate than last time. I'm gonna say somewhere between seven and nine clears in stage two. And next we talk about the third stage. Um, there is the new 3.3 obstacle. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'll be calling it the flying shelves, because that's what everyone seems to think it is. Uh, that could be a real killer if the reverse grab carries from A&W's version. And we have a spinning sidewinder. So yeah, that's a thing. So with this stage, it's it's kind of tough to predict, but I'm gonna say that there will be a finalist. So I'm gonna go either one or two third stage clears. And finally, we will talk about the final stage. Uh, the second and third obstacles seem to be unchanged, but the new first obstacle, stage four, seems to be a speed wall, like a, a rock climbing wall they would use in the Olympics. It's that, 10 meters high. So, I'm, I don't think anyone's besting this final tower. I don't think anyone knows efficiently how to climb a rock climbing wall. So I'm going to go with no cons in this tournament. And now we can start talking about the individual competitors. For this section, I will be using uh, a pretty well-known format used by the Shack Man of the Shack of Sasuke, link in the description. Basically, I will have both a low and high prediction. Basically, it's just my range of where I think that compare will do, rather than just trying to pinpoint where they'll uh, fail and look like a fool. Up first is Katahide Torisawa, a notorious weightlifter. This will be his 21st appearance on Sasuke, with his first appearance being back in Sasuke 18. He has never gotten farther than the fishbone. Uh, which I believe was the fourth obstacle, so that's the kind of hopes we're looking for. I'd say the lowest result he gets is the quad steps, highest result he gets is the fishbone. This one's pretty straightforward. Up next is number seven, Boru Nisan, the wall fairy. If you are confused by that statement, good. Uh, Boru Nisan was part of the Sasuke Celebrity Auditions, so though we do not know their full talents on a full Sasuke course with them being a rookie, we do know that they can do the quad steps and uh, work a mini trampoline fairly efficiently. I'm going to say their low is the fishbone, their high is the Niren Soritatsukebe. Up next is number 9, Koji Saikawa. He's competed in both Sasuke 37 and Sasuke 38, both times clearing the first stage. Very impressive. Both times he has failed the second stage, the first time on the Samulara Kudari, the second time on the Spider Drop. 
my prediction, a low of the spider drop, a high of the new 3.3 that we are going to call the flying shells. Next is number 13, Takashi Honma. Uh, while he's failed the rolling hill in two of his past four appearances, uh, he did make it to the Dragon Glider in the previous tournament, albeit almost timing out there. I'm gonna say low rolling hill, high Dragon Glider. Next is number 14, Yusuke Goto. Though he did fail the first stage last tournament, he is an avid fan of Sasuke and has, uh, has been training quite a bit for the show, so a lot of people think he has potential. I'm gonna say a low of Dragon Glider and a high of a stage 2 time up on the wall lift. Next is number 19, Toshiaki Kasuga. Uh, he has never made it very far in any of his appearances. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bit bold. Low quad steps, high rolling hill. And right after him is number 20, Rine Sugeta. Part of Taiku Kai TV with Kasuga. Last tournament actually shockingly cleared stage 1 but failed the Simlar Nobori in Stage 2. I'm gonna say a low of the Niren Soritatsukabe and a high of Stage 2 time up on the wall lifting. Next is number 36, Daisuke Matsuda. Uh, he is an avid fan of Sasuke. He's been competing since Sasuke 32. Uh, but he's never beaten the first stage, despite him recreating many obstacles from the show in his backyard, including pretty much the entirety of stage one at this point. Uh, I think he's got a lot of potential. I'm gonna put him as a low of Dragon Glider and a high of timing up at wall lifting. And from there, we skip straight on to the Black Tigers at number 49 and 50. Kicking us off is Suitiro Kawachi, a uh, rookie in this tournament, new part of the Black Tigers. We don't really know his skill level, but I figure Yamada wouldn't have sent him in as a representative if he wasn't skilled enough. So I'm going to say low Fishbone Kai, high... Fall, flying shelves, flying shelves. And then number 50, Yoshiyuki Yamamoto. Uh, performed very well last tournament, made both of the crazy jumps on the cliffhanger dimension in full working order before he slipped off the ledge very close to the rest bar. Uh, I, I'd say fairly easily, low flying shelves, high high final rope in stage 4. Next we will talk about one member of the Akko Gundan in particular, uh, Yoshinori Isa. It seems between Sasuke 38 and 39 he was ousted from the, the Black Tigers, and now he is part of Akko Gundan. So, uh, last tournament failed the flying bar, but seems that may have just been a fluke. I'm going to say low flying bar, high cliffhanger dimension. Next we will talk about Masashi Hiyoki, number 59, one of his higher numbers. Uh, he's been competing for a while, I think since Sasuke 25. He has not failed stage 1 in a long, long time. Failed stage 2 last tournament by timing up mostly do a slip on the spider walk. I'm gonna say low times up on wall lifting again, high uh, cliffhanger dimension. Next is number 75, Shunsuke Nagasaki. Uh, he's got potential. He's failed stage one a lot recently, but if you can just get past that hurdle that is the dragon glider, he could go far. I'm gonna say Low Dragon Glider, high Cliffhanger Dimension. And following him up is number 76, Satoshi Kano. 
again, could beat stage, could go all the way through a lot of stage three if he can just beat the Dragon Glider. I'm gonna say, again, low Dragon Glider, uh, but this time high vertical limit try. And then right after him is number 77, Yusuke Suzuki. He's failed stage one before, he's failed stage two before, he's failed stage three before. Uh, any of these could realistically happen here. I'm gonna say low Niren Soritatsuka Bay, high flying shelves. Next, we will talk about number 82, Ayano Oshima. Uh, has competed a lot in Sasuke and Kunoichi. Uh, has never cleared stage 1 in Sasuke, but has come relatively close. I'm gonna say a low of Dragon Glider and a high of... I'm gonna say a high of Sidewinder. Next, we'll talk about number 86, Naoyuki Araki. Uh, he cleared stage 1 last time. He has never cleared stage 2, from what I remember. Uh... He could do it. I could see him doing it. Uh, we'll say a low of the Dragon Glider and a high of the Flying Shelves. Next is number 87, Ryuichi Sakata, part of ABCZ. Uh, he's beaten Stage 1 before, never beaten Stage 2 before. I can't personally see him doing it. A uh, low of Dragon Glider and a high of Timing Up on Wall Lifting. Next is number 88, Hikaru Iwamoto, otherwise known as the Snowman. Uh, he beat stage 1 in the last tournament. I think he's gonna do it again, so I will say a low of Salmon Lair Nobori and a high of Cliffhanger Dimension, sure. Next is number 89, also the ground, Ryo Matachi. Uh, he failed stage 2 last tournament, I guess he was dizzy from the rolling log, um, but he has the potential to beat stage 3 one more time. So, we'll say a low of the Salmon Lair Nobori and a high of Salmon Lair Jugodan. So next is number 90, Keitaro Yamamoto, and this one is really tough to predict, because He's never beaten stage 2, but if he beats stage 2, he has a high chance of going much farther. So, what I'm gonna say is low rolling log, high Kanzen Seiha. That sounds ridiculous, but I think it's true. Next up, number 91, Tatsuya Tada. Um, he has beaten a couple crazy jumps before. He has also failed a couple crazy jumps before. So it's hard to estimate, but I think he'll obviously a low of, we'll say flying shelves, and then a high of the final rope. Next is number 92, Shingo Yamamoto. Uh, you know, he's got perfect attendance, but he hasn't cleared stage 1 in a bit. It's really all about whether he can beat Dragon Glider. So I'm gonna say a low of Dragon Glider and a high of Salmon Lyra Kudari. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Next up is Katsumi Yamada. Uh, unconditional Dragon Glider. That's all I will be saying on the matter. Next after that, number 97, the drummer of the Golden Bombers, Kenji Darvish. Uh, he's never beaten stage 2. Uh, failed Dragon Glider last, last tournament, so a low of the Dragon Glider and a high of a wall lifting time up. Number 98 is Tomohiro Kawaguchi. He's failed the warp wall in the past two tournaments, though he has the potential to go farther than that. Uh, through trailers, we've been able to see that it is raining during his run. So, unconditional Niren Soritatsukebe. Number 99 is Yuji Rishihara. Uh, 
he's come very close to clearing stage 3 again, but last tournament timed up on stage 2. So, a low of timing up on wall lift, and a high of the final rope. I don't think he consens this tournament, but he could get to the final rope. And finally, Yusuke Morimoto. Uh, again, due to trailers, we can see it's raining during his run, or at least wet. Uh, so, he's been known to have trouble with wet warped walls in the past, so I have to say a low of the Niren Soritatsuka Bay, but I will say that the high is Kanzen Seha. He can do it this tournament, no doubts. And that's my predictions. Uh, a lot of repetitive highs and lows, but that's pretty much because those the main highs and lows are the killers of the tournaments. Uh, what do you think? Do you have different predictions for me? Leave them in the comments below, and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. God, I hate farming that. Anyway, uh, see you with the next video when this tournament airs on December 28th, only a few days from now.